cool. So um, I'm just going to show a couple of ways in which I've been using raw personally. Um, I won't get too much into technical details because that's been sort of covered a lot already. So um, yeah, I'll just show you some of the ways that I've been using it. So uh, here's a beat that I was working on the other day. I'll just play a couple of bars of it so you can hear it and then I'll go through so how, how some of the sounds were made. So that's kind of the basic idea of it. And raw was used a lot in the creation of this percussion here. So if I just play that by itself, we get this. And the way that the original beat sounded before I put any roar on it was like this. So it's just kind of some basic drum machine stuff. And the way that I did this was I used raw and I used its envelope follower <clears throat> as a modulation source for a bunch of different stuff in the plugin. So if we take a look at the envel envelope follower here, um, it's basically just catching the kicks and the snares. And then what's going on in the matrix, the mod matrix here is I'm attaching it to stuff like the tone amount, which Madeline just explained, the bias, which Marco explained, um, the filter frequency, which has been explained, and then the feedback amount, which has also been explained. So basically, you can see these are all either 100% positive or negative values. So pretty much what's happening is whenever a kick or a snare is happening, it's just snapping this value down to zero and then back up to a hundred. So what you get is the kicks and the snares are kind of clean, but in all of the gaps, you get this like weird feedback and stuff like that. So you can hear there, whenever a kick or a snare happens, it kind of stops the effect being so intense. And then in the gaps, you get that feedback. So I basically messed around with this idea uh, on this drum loop a bunch, and then I recorded it down into a few different channels and then just chopped all the bits out that I liked. So for example, all of these audio files, these purple ones are just this kind of stuff. And then, yeah, basically I just kind of chopped all that up to make this interesting percussive collage over the top of this beat. So if I just play all the drums with that, it's like you get all this kind of interesting glitchy stuff here. Okay, so that's the first way that I used it. Uh, the second way that I used it was uh, by kind of abusing this uh, this feedback mode thing here. So I noticed that on the feedback mode, you have the ability to tune the feedback to a note. And the way that I understand this feedback mode is it's basically like a delay with a very short delay time, which creates a tonal kind of resonance, right? So like if we just get, you know, the regular old delay that we're all used to and you turn the feedback up, and you put it on time mode and turn this down to a pretty short value, you get these sort of tonal uh, outputs from it. So if I just play, this is what I'm sending through it. So just a basic saw melody. And if I put this delay on it with a really short feedback time and a, uh, sorry, a really short delay time and a lot of feedback. You get that kind of tonal sort of pingy metallic sound. So <clears throat> the cool thing about uh, RAW is that you can choose to have 
these different note values and one of those is note so you can just instead of say make it like 33 milliseconds you can just say make it an a sharp so i thought it'd be interesting to use the um expression control plugin to take the midi that's coming in uh the key track and then attach that to this note so that when i send midi into it each different note has this tuned feedback but the feedback is tuned to the actual musical note that's going into it uh, so without raw, we, we get this melody. And then when I turn raw on, you'll see that this feedback is sort of changing per note. And as I play this, you'll notice here, um, I'll just mute this while I play it. You'll, you'll notice like as I'm playing this, you can see uh, this modulator from the MIDI here is, is following the melody. And then that is attached to the feedback, which is tuned. So yeah, you can kind of get these interesting musical things out of this. And uh, the other interesting thing about this is, again, without even hearing it, you don't have to look at it. If I change the MIDI to be like an octave lower or something, then you'll see that this modulation amount is now lower. And if I pitch this MIDI all the way up, then you'll see that that modulation amount is higher. So one of the interesting things that you can do is you can pitch the MIDI all the way down, say we go down like three octaves, but then we pitch the plugin up by three octaves so that musically nothing has changed, but the modulator has changed to be three octaves lower, which is attached to the note thing on the feedback here so now when i turn this up instead of the feedback being where it was it's going to be three octaves lower now but the note's going to be the same <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting sounding. It's a little all over the place. So I put pitch map and auto tune and stuff after it to try and tune it a bit more and then add a delay and soothe to kind of, uh, you know, just tame it all a little more and, and then some EQ and some widening. And uh, now as a layer for this main melody here, it kind of just sits under that, making some weird noise. get a lot of that feedback tail there so it's more of like a sound designy kind of idea but i i'm a big fan of trying to mix the sound design and the uh and the musicality of things together so here's another example of that same technique but i believe i'm using a different um wave shaping mode here uh so the original sound with nothing on it if i just i guess turn all of this stuff off sounds like this it's just like a really simple single note thing and this is just some preset called delay beat pluck that is an operator preset so same deal here i'm using <clears throat> expression control uh to take the midi that the melody is playing and i'm attaching it to the feedback mode here We basically turn this like very simple uh, synthesized sound into kind of almost something that sounds like a like a Eastern instrument, like a Kodo or something. So this is again what it sounds like without that. Like a really, really simple sound and then you put this on and it's automatically like an Eastern instrument. Yeah, that was that was kind of fun. Um, 
uh, I believe this is kind of the same thing, except, oh, okay. So what I'm doing here is uh, this wave shape, a full rect, it kind of pitches stuff up by an octave. Um, not exactly. I, I believe the reason this happens is a bit because it wave shapes the signal in such a way that it makes the each wave cycle sort of creates a harmonic, I guess, which makes each wave cycle have two of its shape, which equals one octave higher in pitch, I guess. So this thing is basically just being used to pitch, uh, pitch this melody up. So without roar on it, it sounds like this. So yeah, that's uh that's another thing that I've been doing with it is using it as almost like a pitch tool, but it only really works if you want to pitch stuff up an octave, or if you use the dry wet, you can kind of just add an octave harmonic there, so it can almost be like a harmonization plugin in a way. So that's kind of interesting. And then the last thing that I've been using it for, and I've kind of always used distortion in this way. Um, but I'll explain it anyway, cause it's, it's kind of, I find it interesting. So, um, so I have some bass here, right? And the bass sounds like this. Uh, I need to turn this on. So it's a cool melody and stuff, but it sounds a little bit boring in my opinion, because it's just they're super dry synths and it doesn't really have any sort of interest to it. So I often use distortion to just like slam a whole group of synths like this to make them sound really gritty. So you get this kind of thing. <laughs> Um, and what's going on here is the sub is kind of the main thing that's setting raw off to make it do this. So if I play this, but I turn the sub off here, you, you really don't get anything because there's not enough signal going into raw to even, uh, have it trigger the sound or have any output come out. So you just get that kind of static. So. Uh, so I send the sub into it, and then after the the uh, distortion plugin, or after raw in this case, I cut the all of the lows from this signal. So then you get all of that nice crispy uh, stuff happening. But then I layer a clean sub with it on top of that. So then you get something more like this. <laughs> So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get that really nice crispy top end, but then you also get the nice clean tonal untouched sub. Um, and that's something that's kind of just true of all distortions is they hate subs. So if you ever want to make your distortion get a little angrier, you should send more sub into it. Uh, and Roar actually kind of has something on it, this tone control here, which helps with that, uh, depending on which way you turn this. It either boosts more sub or cuts more sub and it kind of applies like a shelf in either direction. Um, so that's another fun thing to play with. So uh, to hear what that's doing, I'll show you. Yeah, and then you can change the frequency at which that shelf is happening.